Hey, welcome to episode 121 of Scar Bearers. I'm Chris D.T. Gordon. As always, it's a blessing to have you here with me today. And helping me out on the back end of the channel are Nate and Britton Barron. If you want them to help you out with your projects, whether it be a podcast or a video production of another sort, you can reach out to them at Nate Barron. Well, as we get closer to that awful S word, yeah, school, we are we realize that those problems that students had last school year are still there this school year. Those struggles with academics, social issues, health issues, and many others. And if my message of the attitude of gratitude can help increase your students' gratitude, positivity, and resilience, please reach out to me at chrisdtgordon.com. Also, if you're a business and organ or organization that has uh, you know deals with people you know working through issues and can deal can really benefit from some gratitude positivity resilience let me know as well we can see if we can make this work for your business or organization well today i'm really happy to be joined by a fellow crusader for mental health his name is zach gottlieb zach how are you today Hi, I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me. Zach, it's my pleasure because I've seen you on Instagram sharing your story, sharing your platform, and it's very inspiring. I Both of us speak to high schoolers, young adults about the importance of mental health, though we have our own origin stories, as I like to say, and we go by about it in different ways and i really like that and i'm really excited to hear your origin story as i call it sure so taco zach started about a year ago it was last summer and the primary reason that i started it was because that was in the midst of covid where the media was really pushing teens to talk about what they were experiencing and i noticed that none of my friends were doing this and it was really hard for me and just other teens to share what we felt. So I, you know, I was just noticing a lot of the stigma in our culture, especially for teens. And I know that a lot of people my age, I mean, everyone's on social media. So I wanted to meet them where they were. I created Talk With Zach, it's a Gen Z platform to have these important conversations where we could really be open and vulnerable um, and really just give teens a space to connect. Now, when you start something, as with most things, there's a lot of uh, obstacles that pop in yeah. your way. What kind of obstacles did you find when you started this en endeavor? I think the first major obstacle, honestly, was getting it started from the initial uh, inception to actually creating it. Because I was very worried, not only what my friends would think, but because it's on social media, anyone can see it. So knowing how stigmatized uh talking about feelings is especially for boys i was extremely uh worried going into that and just thinking about how others would react but i got a very positive response um so i was very happy about that since then i think the main obstacles have been i uh, pretty much just like on the entrepreneurial side um obviously i, I have to think a lot about uh various things recently i did merch and I had never done that before, so that was a bit of a challenge to get put up, but um, it's been going pretty well. So, yeah I, yeah, I think a lot of it is just I'm new to a lot of this, and it's figuring it all out. But once I get the hang of it, it's fine. Yeah, you and I are also uh, budding entre entrepreneurs, and so that there definitely is a huge learning curve when it comes yeah. to you know, developing new skills and learning a new trade, as it were. Now, when you look at your own journey... And I know that, you know, um, everyone has, as I said, their origin story. How did you, I mean, how did you come about be saying, hey, I'm, you know, not only can I help other people, but I can help myself. Have you, you know, faced a struggle in your life that you realize that, you know, this could benefit yourself as much as others? 
Yeah, so this is a little bit before I started Taco Zack. Uh, but the first week of COVID in 2020, my grandfather, who I was really close with, passed away. Very And good. when that happened, um, you know, I, I was obviously devastated. And the message that I got from other people was, oh, be strong, push through, you got this. Um, and it wasn't really allowing for me to express what I was feeling, what I was going through in that moment. It was all, you could get past this. It wasn't focused on the process at all. And that's when I first really started to notice that, like, there's a lot of stigma around uh, talking about feelings, talking about emotions. Um, so I think, like, situations like that, very personal situations where in the past, if, I, if I'm going through something, I'm not very inclined to, like, hit up my friends and be like, hey, I need some support. Um, but I think doing that with like a couple of close friends, obviously I don't want to just like do that to like every single person I know because that can seem a little overwhelming. But like for close friends, if I'm experiencing something and I need to talk, I think applying that to my own life uh, is, has been really beneficial. And I've noticed that like some of my friends have, have like started to open up to me, which is nice. I was going to ask that, you know, what yeah. personal uh, benefits have you or your friends uh you know, reaped from this new endeavor. I uh, have any, you know, I, and I'm, obviously we don't want to reveal anything uh, personal, but, you know, has your relationship with them changed because of this endeavor? Yeah, I, I, I think it has. I think they've definitely been more open to me. And I, I, I actually really like talking about like personal things. I like going deep with people. So, I mean, I think it's a great thing. I think that like we've just been more open with each other. That's like the the bulk of it. I, I think like before people definitely like talked to me about things, but now it's happening at a much greater volume. Okay. Without yeah. any, you know, revealing any, you know, uh, names or anything, what is maybe one of the most eye-opening experiences you have witnessed because of this, because of your outreach and your movement? So, hmm, I, I have to think about that. I think the main thing is like during finals, a lot of people were just like, it was insane. Um, and I just think having a lot of people, like I had one or two people that I'd call like every night just to like talk and like rant to, which is just nice. Um, because it's just sometimes like you just need to listen, like you just need someone to listen to you. So having that, like going through a really stressful time and just talking about it, I think during finals, like doing that, like almost every night is just really helpful. And I think like when you're going through something that's stressful, talking to people, connection, community, knowing you're not alone is just so important. Uh, it's just really, really healing. That's, you know, it's really, I don't want to say funny, but it's very interesting because yeah. you're talking about, you know, dealing with finals on the student side. My wife and I are both teachers. Oh, wow. And so we deal with it on the other side. And yeah. sometimes my wife will come home and, you know, she'll talk about her day and she teaches in a traditional school. I teach mm -hmm. online. And oh, wow. so it's a different environment, but we both, you know, have really realized how uh, helpful it is, even as adults to talk with each other and let the other person rant for a little bit about their own personal situation. So I love that you're able to realize the benefits of this so early because I think it's gonna not only help you with high school, but it's gonna be a life skill. Yeah, definitely. And, and, I, and I think that, you know, being able to be, have that outlet and be able to let, you know, let out that frustration to vent, as you said, is going to be a, a key component to your well-being going forward. Have any adults reached out to you with, uh, you know, I guess with their stories or with uh, seeking advice from you? Yeah, I've gotten a lot of questions from parents. I know it's a teen platform, but parents are really interested in hearing the teen perspective. So I've gotten just an influx of questions from them whether it's how to get my team to open up um, or how to help with like a various, like a more specific thing with my team um, or how to get them to like do their schoolwork or just like various things. Like, uh, 
about their kids, which is really interesting um, because I anticipated that almost all my questions would be from teens, but there's so many from parents. It's like insane. That is, it's very refreshing. Now, I guess refreshing and encouraging to hear yeah. that the parents are reaching out to you because not only are you reaching another demographic, but that yeah. shows that the parents are truly wanting to open up that line of communication with their, with their children. And yeah, you know, exactly. because, because for years we've heard, or actually generations, we hear about the younger generation and the, you know, it wasn't like this when I was, you know, mm -hmm. this age and there was, there was always that generational divide. And I love that the, the parents are reaching out to you to break down that wall. And yeah. so that's very exciting. It's something, speaking of exciting, I saw on your Instagram that you attended a very, a, a very, I guess, um, motivational or, uh, you know, uh, eye-opening event called the Aspen Ideas Festival. Yeah, so actually it was on a panel there as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell, tell a little bit about that? Sure. So I was invited to speak there um, about Gen Z and the things we go through and then some strategies uh, to mitigate those various issues. And I was on the panel. There's this podcast that's called Teenager Therapy. I don't know if you've heard of it. But for those of you who don't know, it's like one of the most popular uh, podcasts by teens and for teens. So two of the members from that were also on my panel. Uh, and we, uh, it, it, was, it was really good. They're, they're great. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, there are actually some teens there, um, very few, because it was mainly an adult event. But it was really great to... Uh, speak to them and answer their questions and then again there were some adults asking questions about like how to help with their kids which is really interesting um but yeah i was speaking there about that um and then overall it was just a great experience i got to meet a lot of new people and um just hear a lot of interesting panels in addition to speaking that's fantastic it, it's really really cool that you're able to branch out and not just reach people on Instagram, but you're talking with people at these events. Do you have any other events uh, coming up that you're speaking at? Uh, any other? So I'm going away in a couple of weeks, but after that, I have some conversations lined up that will be coming out on my Instagram. And so, so yeah, just look out for those. It's on my Instagram is Taco Zach. You could find them there. Um, I, I did one yesterday about anxiety I talked to a college student. He wrote a book about his experience in high school and dealing with anxiety, which is something he uh, was grappling with for most of his life. And uh, we, we had a great conversation. Go check that out. And then I'll have some more coming up in a few weeks. Very cool. Now, uh, speaking of upcoming events, do you have any plans or any projects you're working on in the near future? Sure. So uh, Merge came out a few months ago. And that's going to be expanding soon. Right now, I just have a hoodie, but I plan to move to other forms of merch as well. In addition to that, I'm expanding platforms to both TikTok and YouTube. I'm going to be a lot more active on both of those and get those up and running. And then uh, I'm in the midst of working out various partnerships with brands and uh, other content creators and people that I think would be great to have on. And yeah, that, that's going to be coming up in the next few months. So very look out cool. For that. Uh, that, yeah. that is, are you, because, are you going, did you ever plan about be, or did you ever plan of being a businessman? Because it sounds like that is your forecasted future here. Yeah, I'm actually doing a summer program about entrepreneur. Uh, sorry, I'm doing a summer program um, about entrepreneurship in a couple of weeks. So, wow. And where is that through? Oh, wait, sorry. Can you say that again? It cut out. Well, well where is that uh, that in, that uh, internship through? Oh, it's uh, it's a summer class. Oh, summer at, class. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's at uh, UPenn. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm I'm wondering if they can maybe learn a few uh, a thing or two from you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I definitely want to use part of what I like. I mean, a lot of what I'm gonna learn there is I I could definitely use for Taco Zach because. I really love the entrepreneurial aspect of it. 
And I think building it out and just reaching as many teams as possible, whether it's through branding, marketing, um, or partnerships is just really interesting to me. Now, if you were to uh, say, you know, set like a pie in the sky dream goal for you for talk with Zach, what would that be? It would definitely be to expand my reach by a lot. Uh, I have teams in many, many countries right now worldwide, but I definitely would love uh, to expand that even further. So that's the first thing. And also love to get some more partnerships with corporations and content creators um, and then expand my merch out and then expand to these other platforms. So a lot of it is like what I'm starting to do already with the expansion. And then the main thing is just getting that reach. Okay. Well, uh, you know, it, it goes without saying, I hope you have, you, you know, reach those goals and more because what you're doing is so important. Hmm. You know, I think that being able to, as you said, uh, fight the stigma of mental health and be able to talk about our feelings and explore our relationships through those conversations is so vital. Yeah. It and, is. and, you know, and have to help people work through those issues. If you now, I'm a gratitude guy and I like to see what I can find in my life that I'm grateful for. So I want to ask you a question. Is there something in your life that at the time it happened or you it came upon you that you didn't really appreciate it or understand it? But now when you look back at it, you really have gratitude for that event or for that item. I uh, sure. So I think one event that I think, or it's not really an event, it's, it's just like something that I'm very grateful for is like, I've been raised in a household where like, I've been a little too encouraged to talk about what I feel. And I haven't always loved that. Because I'm like, you know, I, you know, I keep things to myself a little bit too. Um, and I want some like personal space or whatever. But I think that environment is really encouraged me to speak out about what I feel and just has made me a very open person. And I think without that starting talk was like would have been a lot more difficult. Oh yeah. I, I definitely see that. And I'm, yeah. I am thankful for that, that you were raised in that kind of uh, environment as well, because you are benefiting so many people. And speaking of that, where could people find you? I obviously Instagram. Sure. So yeah, my Instagram is talk with Zach. Uh, TikTok and YouTube coming soon are also going to be Taco Zach. And then my website is tacozac.org. On the website, you could submit a blog post. You could ask me a question that I'll answer in a video. You could reach out for partnerships, media opportunities, anything like that. Um, so yeah, check that out. Again, it's tacozac.org. You'll find everything there. Excellent. Well, Zach, it, like I said before, it's been a pleasure to talk with you, but I do have one final question. Sure. What is your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur. Um, wow, that's tough. I'd say I say a triceratops. I don't know why. I just kind of it's just like a pretty interesting like I feel like the T Rex is like the obvious choice. And like yeah, a lot of people say that. Yeah. Yeah. So I just feel like the triceratops I like when I was younger and I was more into like dinosaurs and stuff, I just gravitated towards it. I think I just like the three horns. I mean, it seems kind of like a peaceful animal because it's a herbivore, I believe. Yep. You know, but it also, you know, it can defend itself because it has three horns. So, yeah, yeah that's my answer to that question. Well, very good. Well, yeah. once again, Zach, it's been an honor and a privilege to talk with you today. I'm so happy we could connect and nothing but the greatest of uh blessings on your journey and i hope you reach all those uh, milestones you're reaching at you're uh, going for yeah thanks so much my Great pleasure talking to you today my yeah, my pleasure zach so folks you want to reach out to zach to talk with him or reach or see what he's up to you can find talk with zach on instagram and other channels coming up as he said if you want to reach out to me to find out what I have going on in the world of the attitude of gratitude, you can go to chrisdtgordon.com. You can look and see what I have in terms of a free tag one sheet. You can go to the merch store 
You can get a nice tag explainer shirt, or you could find the what is your favorite dinosaur shirt. People love those. And just start a conversation with me. But as always, I ask you to like, subscribe, share this message so you can help Zach share his message and perhaps help someone out. And as always, thank you so much for being here with me today. Please have a great day. And remember to pass on perfection and go for greatness.